Well, hello and welcome. My name is Angus Patey and this is a 10 minute technical talk. We're going to discuss how you can use the X-Rate Exact to verify and validate colors that are produced within your shop. So a scenario might be where a customer has given you a sample and you need to use that as a reference for future prints. So you want to make sure that you get within a certain delta E to match that customer's reference. So you could use that and measure that and, and basically just measure against that and, and do a compare or you've produced a sample in-house and the customer has signed off on that and said yes this is perfect I want you to continue to match this within a number a certain delta E and you want to be able to verify that as time goes on. The problem with physical samples and comparing those is that it becomes very subjective there's a lot of variations that can, can influence that it could be the observer the individual it can be the lighting that you're looking at it under it can be having three people make the evaluation and you're going to get three different uh, interpretations of if that color is close enough. So if you use a spectrophotometer, you use the delta E uh, equation formula for doing the compare and you have a numerical value of say 2.5 or less, that's your target for approval and anybody on the shop floor can then do a measurement and say whether it's a pass or a fail. It's very fast, it's very accurate and it allows you to maintain consistency uh, over time. So. In this case, I'm going to have two samples that I have here. I'm going to use my trusted uh, Pantone book as my samples. I'm going to measure those and make those my targets. So this is uh, X-Rite Exact Manager. You can download it for free from the X-Rite website. Um, it allows you to build job templates and projects and do all sorts of neat things with the Exact. I find it easier to do this on the computer and then copy it to the Exact. You can do a lot of this directly on the Exact. It's just that the interface is small and it's, it's a little bit more cumbersome. So here we're going to build a color library. We're going to call this customer colors, right? Call it whatever you want. Um, within there now we have the library. Now we're going to have the individual colors. So I'm going to select that as the new as the color and let's call this one green. Um, I've measured this before but we'll measure it again just so we have it. There we go. So there's our measurement. You know what? I'm just, just to be safe, let's delete that one and just because I was practicing before. It could be that there's some kind of confusion. There we go. Perfect. So we've got our new color that's in there. Next, we want to add a tolerance. A tolerance is very important so that we can uh, have a pass fail on this color, right? We have to enter that. So the one that I recommend is delta E2000, the 00. We're measuring M1. And I find 2.5 is a very good tolerance for majority of the customers. If you can keep things under a 2.5, you're rarely going to get any complaints. And we can talk about what that is in another video, but 2.5 delta is a pretty decent uh, tolerance. Okay, so we've added that tolerance to that one. Um, let's do a second one just so we have a second color in there that we can also show how it works. Uh, this one's going to be a purple. And we're going to measure that as well. So again, I've just got the exact connected by USB and it's connected to my computer and I'm now just taking that measurement sample directly from that. Okay, so we're going to go again, Delta 2000, we're going to do M1, we're going to go to 2.5 again. For some reason, the last one never tabs through. So, 2.5 for all of those, we're going to say okay. Now you could build 30 or 40 samples within that customer, or it could just be one, whatever you need. So now, in order to get that on the exact, we're going to carry that down and drag that down onto the exact, and now it says uh, syncing colors. So now we have the colors on the exact, and we have them on our hard drive, right? Same colors, both places, right? Easy peasy. So now we can utilize a tool on here called remote control so that you can see what I'm seeing when we're running the exact. Okay, so depending upon the configuration setup you have, you can do basic compare or search. Um, basic compare, you can load the green or load the purple and it'll always keep that color as the target. If you use the search function, it will then search within that library to find the color that's closest to the one that you're measuring. I find search is a little more user friendly because you don't have to switch between the colors in your library if you have a few of them. So I click on this search button. That brings up the ability to measure a sample. Here is your target icon. So we want to click on that once or touch on that on your uh, touch screen. We're going to load on the fan here. We're going to load a new standard. And that obviously is going to be our customer colors. So click on that, sample that, and then we're going to exit out through that little arrow. 
So now we have our samples selected. I can go back to my exact, and here, which is kind of interesting, you can see that the green is selected, and it wants a paper weight, so that's just asking me for that as a reference. Perfect, so paper weight is done. So now I'm going to measure the purple, okay? And you can see it changed to the purple, right? Because it saw that it was a purple, and I've got a green checkbox. It's a 0.6 delta E, so we are absolutely good to go. Um, if I was to measure a sample that's just similar to it, but not the same, um, the darker color just above, you can see that I've got a 9.7 delta E and I've got an X. So in this situation, you would need to stop production. You need to go back. You need to look at what's going on. Was there a profile issue? Is there a paper issue? Is there an ink issue? Is there something with the heads? Are they misfiring? Uh, could be all sorts of things. But until you get this pass, which we'll do by measuring the correct sample, you cannot continue on production, right? So super easy. Uh, we can go back to the green now. We could check that one. Again, I'm not switching or telling it which one it is. It just automatically jumps to that color, and we've got the green checkbox. So you can see, you know, what you're seeing there is exactly what I'm seeing on my uh, screen. It's a super, super accurate way to validate colors in a production environment. The idea would be that you might have 10 or 15 libraries. Within each of those libraries, you have the specific colors for those customers. You have an X-ray exact that you can use out on the floor. You could have four or five digital devices running. And if anybody needs it, they just pick it up, they go to that library, and they sample their color. If they get above a 2.5, then they have to call in a salesman or a customer service or quality control manager or somebody to make approval for that job to go through. But if it's under a 2.5, you could be running this at 2 in the morning, you're guaranteed that that color is going to be consistent and accurate. You could also use this throughout the run, you know, if you're wanting to verify and validate that. Lastly, since we're on this topic, let's look at how we could use this in a slightly different way. Um, spot colors are often not just uh, the samples that are provided, but they could be a Pantone. So you can load the full Pantone library onto this machine, which is what I've done here. I've got this Pantone solid coded, so I clicked on the bottom one. And we can exit back out of that. So as I told you before, there's two ways you can use this. You can use this to find a spot color. So if I measure a spot color in the search function, it's going to search the Pantone library for a color that is closest to this, okay? So that, I measure the Pantone 265, and it said the Pantone 2083 is closer. Bottom line is Pantone isn't always 100% accurate in their book. I'd much rather use uh, a device to target Pantone. So this is how I would do it. Um, we would go back to the home button, go to basic compare, load up our Pantone library here. So in this case, we're trying to match a Pantone, let's say 265, okay? So we've got our Pantone library still loaded. I click on the Pantone list, right? And here I can search for a specific color, okay? So I click on the search icon, and I'm gonna say 265. I think it's gonna catch up to me, there we go. Okay, so Pantone 265, okay might find a couple in that range because there could be some other ones with that in that decimal in there for those numbers okay so we've got Pantone 265 I need to select that click on that once so now it has become my locked target Pantone 265 is now the value and it will not change unlike in the search function it will um, it'll search for the, cl the closest value so now I take a measurement of Pantone 265 <laughs> and here's the irony of how inaccurate um, this uh, situation, how inaccurate the book is, right? The spectral value that Pantone supplies for Pantone 265 is what they use to print the book, okay? I just measured a Pantone book that is a couple of years old. It's 5.6 delta E away from the target. Um, we can go to a slightly different delta that's going to give us a, a slightly better value. If we go to delta 2000, um, that number will come down, right, to 2.89. 
that's probably a little bit more in line with what our eye sees versus um, the very strict LT. So 2.89, not as bad. You know what I mean? Like I said, 2.5 is a fail. But still, if your customer had a tolerance of 2.5 and your book is already a 2.8 away and you're having 2.5 as a tolerance, that doubles it. So I recommend that you use the Pantone library that's built into the device versus using the book. And obviously, we can talk more about that. So that's a wrap. That's just over 10 minutes on today's 10-minute tech talk on how to use the x rite Exact for spot color matching when you're on press. So again, Angus Patey at Fujifilm, great chatting with you and look forward to seeing you in another video.